Hey crafty people, welcome back to my channel. And in case you're new here, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd, cause I'm a nerd who loves to craft. I do paper crafting, card making, junk journaling, and mixed media art. Let's get crafting. Okay, so welcome back to another Mass Make Monday. We are gonna be taking six by six uh, pieces of design paper and turning it into pockets. Now, uh, some of them we're gonna do is gonna involve two sheets of paper to create a multi-level pocket and some will just involve one. Um, and so we're gonna start our timer and I may need to stop it at some point and take a pause because my poor dog is currently at the vet. Um, so what I'm gonna start doing is I've got my papers divvied up into single pockets and double pocket stacks. And I'm gonna use a scoreboard because it's just easier. Um, and for the single ones, I'm gonna score at one and three quarter inches to fold over to create our pockets. And we're gonna kinda assembly line this. So we're just gonna go through all of them and score. So for this one, we'll just end up folding that over to create a pocket. And then when you glue it on the page, you can have a second pocket. So as I was saying, I'm waiting to hear back from my vet's office because my poor puppy um, has done something to possibly his back. Uh, they, they've done x-rays and there's nothing on the x-ray that clearly indicates what's causing his discomfort. Um, so I'm waiting because they want to do some lab works to hear back from them with a new estimate for what I'm going to be spending for today's visit to the vet. Um, but I figured I wanted to get this video going, so I may have to take a pause to check out and see what's going on if I get an email from my vet so that I can okay the lab work for them. <laughs> um, oops, I folded that one all kinds of cockeyed. Oof. Let's try this again. So yeah, I'm just going through, scoring, folding, toss them off to the side, and we'll pull them all back in a minute once we finish with all of the scoring. Um, so yeah, he started acting funny yesterday. My, he, I have, I have two beagles, and. Howl is my little Mexican jumping mane um, because he like jumps at, at like all the time. He's constantly bouncing around, um, especially when I'm feeding him. He's usually like when I'm getting their food together right by me, jumping up and down, kind of doing a, hey, mom, hurry up. You're not getting it fast enough. Move, mom, move kind of job. The same when... Um, my other dog, Bert, is on medication and he gets it in peanut butter. Um, and so, all right, so for the two pagers, we're stacking two on top of each other. So the first one I'm gonna score at one and a half inches. And the second I'm gonna score at two and a half inches. And so they're gonna then fold. One and two. So um, if you're crafting along with me, you're not gonna want this to be too terribly thick of um, design paper or cardstock because it'll get a little bulky with the double pockets. Um, this is the Craft Consortium six by six pads that I bought recently um, that I'm trying to be good about not just having them sit in my craft stash. Um, I'm trying to decide because this will go, you know what, let's do that at the one and a half and then this at the two and a half. Um, so as I was saying, he, he, he just jumps up and down constantly. Well, yesterday, and he, you know, gets up on the furniture, no problem, and all that. Well, yesterday he spent all of his day in the other room on a dog bed instead of sitting on the couch next to me. Usually during the work day, he sits on the couch, wedged between me and the arm of the couch, and just sleeps there next to me. He didn't jump up on the couch 
when I was giving, you know, Bert his meds. They both get peanut butter. He wasn't jumping for that. So I was hoping he was going to be doing better. And it was just kind of a tweaked something, temporary kind of thing. But this morning, he still was all off and he was shivering and just seemed miserable. So off to the vet. I called, I called the vet and they were able to fit us in for a drop off appointment. So I dropped him off this morning. And so he is at the vet's office right now, which I always hate taking him into the vet because he gets so very stressed out at the vet. My other one's like, fine, whatever, you know, he may be not sitting down and, you know, roams around like a loony in the vet's office, but he's not stressed out by it. Whereas Powell gets all kinds of stressed out. So the poor little boy was all kinds of stressed out when I dropped him off this morning. Um, and he's not feeling very well. And I just feel so bad for, for him. Although they have given him paid meds. Um, that was one of the first questions the vet tech asked me is if I was okay with them giving him pain meds. I'm like, yes, please. Um, I think if we're going to do this one going this way. So yeah, I'm awaiting an email from them. So that's my excitement for this. I'm filming this on Friday and it's gonna get posted on Monday. So I'm just trying to decide, let's do it that way. Cause I want some of this color showing. So yeah, we, we, we've, we've had that fun excitement, which is always so stressful because it's not like you can tell me what's bothering him and the poor thing just, just looking so pathetic and miserable um, this morning. And then I, I, I leash him up to take him out to the car to go to the vet's office. And he's all like, oh, this is great. He's going outside. And he like perks up. I'm like, really, dude? <laughs> but yeah, no, he, he's, he's definitely got something going on. So hopefully it won't be too expensive of a something going on with him. Um, so, yeah. The joys of pet ownership. Do you have any uh, exciting plans for this weekend? Which seems kind of silly to be asking you because it's going to be, this video is going to go up on Monday, so it'll be after the weekend. So hopefully you had a lovely weekend. <laughs> um, I am going to see uh, the first Lord of the Rings movie in concert, which I know I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I am taking my father, it was one of his Christmas presents, to go see that. Um, because he is a, a big fan of classical music and I know he actually really enjoys the music from the Lord of the Rings series. He had all of the soundtracks on CD, I believe. Um, got a couple more and then we'll start gluing and assembling. Um, so, yeah, that is my plans for Sunday afternoon. So I'm trying to get all of my filming for next week done in advance since I'm going to have very little time to do much of anything on Sunday since most of the day is going to be taken up with Lord of the Rings. 
Um, and I don't know yet. We have not made a decision on whether or not we are um, going to eat out to eat afterwards, but we may end up. Oh, you know what? I wanted to fold this one differently. I wanted that one at the one and a half. And this one two and a half. It should not show. We should be okay. It should get covered by this. Actually, uh, I'm going to do it like that and that. There we go. And the last one. been watching anything interesting lately on TV. Um, I've of course been watching a bunch of YouTube videos but other than that I've been watching re-watching the Gilmore Girls uh, yet again. All right we are done with our scoring and our folding. I'm gonna move my scoreboard out of the way. Now I am gonna take I'm gonna use my notch punch because I like the shape it uh, creates and it's the punch for my uh, what you call it? Uh, I can think of the word. Don't worry, I'll, I'll have it in a sec. Um, it's for my uh, envelopes for envelope making. All right, I am gonna line it up and use my mat so that I can notch it all in the middle, and that's the three inches mark basically. So we should, if I line up the bottom with the bottom of my mat, be getting everybody in in the same spot. So we're just gonna go and notch these guys. So yeah, these, because of the size of the pockets, and these are gonna be filled. I don't plan on doing all that much for decorating, but I do have some stuff set aside for decorating a couple of these just to add a little interest. All right, let's go through and notch everybody real quick, or trying to be real quick. You know what, let's see if I can get two in one go, because that would speed this along. Oh, I can. Now you, of course, can use a circle punch if you want. Um, I just like the shape my notch punch creates when it punches out the holes. So there we go, we've got little notched holes to show that there are pockets there. Now this one I'm not gonna notch just yet because I'm gonna show you another idea that's a variation. Um, As, as, as I was saying, I've been re-watching the Gilmore Girls and I'm up to season five. Um, and there were seven seasons plus the little four episode mini series. So were you a Gilmore Girls fan? Um, this is probably the third time I've watched the entire series all the way through. The first was when it was originally on TV. Um, I was a big fan of the show when it was on, um, and then I rewatched it all when they, right before the 
Year in a Life mini series came out, which if you were a fan of the Gilmore Girls, were you like me terribly disappointed with how they ended the Year in the Life um, segment? Because I was like, are you kidding me? That's not that that, that resolves nothing. Like it was supposed to be like a like tie up loose ends kind of like see what's going on with the Gilmore Girls and I, it was very I was very frustrated I'm like now I need another one so yeah <laughs> it is a most excellent show but it that, that the year in a life was well done very enjoyable but goodness that was just it's if you if you haven't seen it I'm not going to spoil it for you but if you have you know what I'm talking about so yeah I, I'm, I'm not sure what the heck I'm going to watch after, but perhaps by the time I'm finished, the new series of television shows will be starting back up, you know, post all of the Hollywood strikes. So there are some shows that I still watch, you know, on regular TV that I'm waiting to come back and some on subscription channels because well I'm a nerd I'm I'm waiting for the next season of you know Star Trek Brave New World to come on because I really enjoyed that series I still haven't watched the last season of Picard I started watching it and I don't I think it was one of those they are trying to be kind of like TV in that they don't they didn't drop all of the episodes at once and I just then it slipped my mind that I needed to go back on and now it's at the point where I'm like I just have to rewatch the whole season <laughs> from the beginning because I don't remember what was going on so yeah I, I have you found that the use of streaming services has changed the way you watch tv I notice that you know I, I have less patience for waiting for the next episode to come out and when I used to, you know, have no problem with that, now I find i much rather watch something where I can sit and binge. So if I go on a streaming service and see that it's only a couple of the episodes are out, I will hold off on starting to watch the show until, like, all of the series is out. Because I'd much rather be able to just sit and binge watch in the evening one show than wait for the next ones to come out. In fact, I think at this point I have a couple of episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race, the new season, have recorded because I keep forgetting that it's started back up again. And so I can sit and watch a few episodes at once. So, yes, the, the effects of binge watching on our television viewing is definitely noticeable. I've definitely noticed it changed. It's changed my patience for waiting for stuff to come out. I want it. I want it. I want all of the show and I want all of the show now. <laughs> so do you have uh, some favorite shows that you like to binge and find you can go back to again and again? Like my sister is a huge Friends fan and watches that over and over. Like it's, it's, Friends and Grey's Anatomy are her to, like, I just need something in the background, don't necessarily need to pay attention to it kind of TV shows. Whereas mine are, Gilmore Girls is definitely one of them. I can just sit and turn that on and just leave it go in the background um, and only half pay attention to it because I have watched it a few times. Although I will admit there were things going on in like, season four and five that I was like oh I forgot about that oh that was a nice surprise I forgot that happened um so yeah go go, go long enough and you will have some surprises in your go-to shows but that's one I can watch over and over again and honestly another one is The West Wing that is one of my all-time favorite tv shows I just think it was so well done. The cast was fantastic on that show. Um, so yeah, I can watch that. And it, and I think it holds up well. Like he, he did it in 
a way that it survives the test of time. Alright, so this is our last one and we're going to get to the gluing. A stack of off cut pieces. All right, so for our single pockets, all we're gonna have to do is glue here and here. I am gonna ink the edges to make it stand out a little bit more, and I'm gonna use my Scorched Timber Distress Oxide ink. And I think I'm gonna take a pause just to see if the email has come through from my, vet, my vet's office after I ink the edges on this guy. You don't have to ink edges. I just thought it would help the pockets stand out more if the edges were inked. These are single pockets, not double pockets. All right, I am going to pause my timer and be right back. All right, let's start back up again. All right, so to create our pocket, really simple. We're just gonna glue down here and glue down there. And voila, we've got a pocket. Now I'm using art glitter glue because it will take up uh, the least amount of space for uh, gluing. And of course then you've got a pocket here and when you glue it on the page, you'll have a pocket here. Depending on how wide your, wide your page is, you could conceivably put it on that way, but this would be too wide for the pages in most of the journals I make. Um, so yeah, I would not necessarily recommend using like a score tape or any other double-sided adhesive just because it doesn't dry. Now you could use glue stick, of course. Um, but like what I was saying with the score tape, you run the risk of stuff sticking on the tape in your pocket. Um, but again, that is of course up to you uh, as with inking edges and things like that. It's completely a personal preference choice. And I should have pulled out some other inks because I'm not gonna wanna do brown on my light colored pieces like these guys um, I am gonna want to do a nice light blue so I've got uh, broken china distress oxide I think that will work Ooh, that is bright blue not, not, not to no. know. No, <laughs> that is not working for me there. Let's try. I think some hickory smoke might work a little bit better. Yes, I like hickory smoke with this one. I have a feeling this is going to be another one of those where I cut a whole bunch and don't have time to assemble everybody. So we are going to skip ahead and set aside the rest of the single pockets since I've shown you how to make one of those. I'm going to set the rest of the single pockets aside for now and show you the assembly on a double pocket. 
and the variation, which I'm gonna need to figure out where I put the one that's getting the variation. Ah, I stuck it over here, so it was out of the way. All right, pretty much the same assembly. Um, what I ended up doing is I went like this for the bottom piece and attached it. I lined up the center, the middle piece, just fold it over, press down, opened up, added some glue along here and here, fold it over. And I just realized I forgot to ink my edges. Um, so let's do that before we go any further. This one I am using the Scorched Timber on because we've got such dark colors, I don't think anything else will show up. I'm not even sure it's gonna show up on, yeah, it's not gonna show up on this one. What I'm gonna do for this guy is grab a scrap piece of paper, stick it in, and kind of go like that, and then this way, any spots I, I don't mess up the page underneath. And then glue down over here and over here. So there's our double set of pockets. Now the variation I didn't put our notches in this one because what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to take out my paper trimmer cut the page in half so here are where here's where my fold is so I'm going to cut it in half like this so essentially we're going to create two of the double stacked pockets when we're done so got that and that and that, and that. So you've got two smaller ones so that you can then, you know, put them on the page together so they can go on the page like that, or you can put them on separate pages, you can put them whichever direction you want. Um, I put my notch punch somewhere. So I'm gonna notch and assemble these guys real quick. If I was remembering, I would have done two at a time to make it go faster. I don't know, is it just me or I, I like the setting a timer because it means, you know, I'm not going on forever and ever and ever, but I also feel so very rushed when I set the timer. So there we go. We've got these guys. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue there. Put, place my piece in the crease area. Fold it up. Somehow that piece is a little narrower. I don't know why. Glue along here and here. And again, I forgot to ink my edges. Wait. And then do here and here. And I will go back and ink these ones. I think the Distressed Oxide um, Scorched Timber will work with the browns on these. So we'll go with that one. So yes, I did get the new estimate from the vet's office and it's 
a nice little chunk of change for them to run lab work and make sure there's nothing else wrong with my dog. But you know, such is the life of a pet parent. You know, what, what, what else am I going to do? Poor little baby needs treatment. I'm hoping it's just going to be a matter of giving him some meds and muscle relaxant kind of thing as on a he just tweaked something which is causing him pain kind of thing um because yeah the the upside of them not finding anything on the x-ray is it means he's not going to need knee surgery or back surgery <laughs> because i've had dogs have both of those and that's no fun the back surgery is the worst because i think after the surgery he had to be kept in a in the crate 24-7 for like 10 weeks um, and could only come out to like be taken out in the yard to do his business. The rest of the time he had to stay in the crate. I'm, I'm shuffling through because I had pulled out stuff to decorate a couple of them. Um, so I want to get, this is one of the ones. All right, so I'm going to use the hickory smoke again. To ink these edges because I think that worked well um, so yeah I am very grateful it's not going to be back surgery because that was that was it was so miserable because the poor puppy who had the surgery I got him as a puppy um, he was he was my first beagle Dashiell um, and he was purebred since then, all of my beagles have been adoptees. Uh, so he needed back surgery. I got him from his breeder when he was eight weeks old. And my husband at the time, his comment was, oh, he's little, he can sleep in the bed with us, which he did. And so it was really rough in that he had to sleep in the crate. So I ended up having getting an air mattress and sleeping on an air mattress on the floor next to the crate to keep him company at night because I didn't want him stressing out <laughs> being all alone. And I had another dog at the time and she would lay on the floor next to the crate with her brother in the crate. It was so very pitiful. But yeah, that was that was a really long 10 weeks because yeah, he his his I think it was 10 weeks. I, it, it was definitely at least eight. I feel like it was 10 that he had to be in the crate. And this was, you know, several years ago, probably, probably about a decade ago, because I think he was around about 10 when he had to have the surgery. Um, and he's been gone about, oh, almost six years now. And he was 15 when he passed. So look, yeah, over 10 years. Okay. So I've got stuff to decorate this guy up. And let me go grab the pieces I grabbed for this one. And I thought I had more room on the edge. Was I going to do one of the oneers, one inch? But no, that's, it might have been this one that I was planning on decorating because, yeah, that's a little bit wider space because it's one and three quarter inches on that one. All right, so we're going to decorate this one. I'm also going to add... A bit of lace on there. So I'm gonna grab my fabric tack Let me cut the piece off first. If you're not aware, I'm currently working on putting together ephemera and stuff for a bee journal, a sewing journal, and a steampunk theme journal. Although I have a feeling I've gotten enough digital kits to make multiples of each of those. And ugh, I don't know if this storing my fabric tack upside down is working or not because I end up getting this like big, I may need to take the lid off and just sort it upside down and let it develop the little glue glob at the bottom to kind of seal it because yeah it 
it drips down and ends up because of the cap forming this like glob of glue around the top and it's not coming out. So let's, let's, I have a feeling that's gonna create a really big glue glob down there. <laughs> Cause there's, there's a big gap between the bottom of the thing and my Fabri-Tac. So maybe I'll stick that glob that I've already got down there to start. If you've watched Pam on the Paper Outpost, she just stores her bottle like that and has just a glue globby thing at the bottom to kind of seal it closed, if that makes any sense. All right, I am gonna grab my antique linen to get rid of the white edges on this. And I'm just gonna toss it on a scrap piece of paper, go around it, and it's just knocking back how white the white areas are from when I fussy cut it out and didn't get it fully, you know. Don't, I find with scissors, I struggle to get a tight fussy cut. And since I've been doing a lot of fussy cutting and don't wanna sit at a desk hunched over with my craft knife, um, which is how I, I fussy cut for years. Um, I'm using scissors instead. Uh, let's add a little lighter brown around the edges of this. Um, I find that I end up having leaving a lot more white space and do more of a bubble cut when I cut with scissors versus when I cut with uh, my craft knife. And I run into the problem. All right, I'm gonna use my Fabri-Tac because we're going over fabric on here and I think it'll work a little bit better for attaching that. Um, so yeah, I like having the antique linen, which just does a great job of knocking back the white. And I'm just trying to get as much of it on as possible. All right, I'll keep you posted on how the new setup with my Fabri-Tac works of using it, of skipping putting the cap on and just putting it in the holder. So there we go, one fully decorated pocket and I will probably once everything's dry, trim the edges a little bit just to uh, make it a little neater. So I grabbed those bits. And I grabbed some, oh, and this is an Abritique printable, and that's by My Porch Prints. And I grabbed ones to go on one of these pockets for the Steampunky journal. And those are bees, not Steampunk. Okay, that's bees, that's Steampunk, that's Steampunk. Okay, and again, with the antique linen, to get rid of all that white area I have left there. Yeah, I was uh, working on getting up the video that we'll post tonight, which is, um, Or that, yes, today's Friday, the video that's going up on Friday. Um, we went to go take the photo for the thumbnail and nearly had a coronary because I couldn't find <laughs> the items that I made. And I was hunting everywhere. And right now my craft space is in kind of a transition state because I'm reorganizing stuff and putting things away and like, trying to get things situated. So it was one of those, I have I had no idea where I might have put it. I'm just gonna trim a little more off so it doesn't hang over. Um, 
Um, so yeah, that was, that was very stressful. A little bit of while before I found it. It was just, they were just underneath some other things that I hadn't looked under, but I was looking everywhere and I was like, good gracious, where the heck did I put them? So yeah. So, um, both of those are my porch prints printables and I'm going to do the technique of just lifting that up holding these guys kind of in place putting some glue on there and sticking him back down so that I can lift everybody up and then flip it over and glue it down so that I'm less likely to rearrange when I place them back down because that's one of those things that tends to happen is you plan stuff out, pick them up, and then everything manages to get reorganized when you put it back down. So there we go. We've got a steampunky pocket and frisbees. Let me see if I can find the pocket I was planning on putting these on. It's somewhere on this desk. I know I glued it together, but now I can't seem to find it. All right, where the heck did that go? It's gotta be here. So we got that guy done. Ah, here it is. Um, and this is from 49 and Market, and this is uh, My Porch Prints. I think this is uh, a Leanna Scraps piece. I'm just lightly get the edges in the brown. And I actually think I'm going to kind of round off the corners on this. That would go there. This will go kind of like there. And our B will go on there. So let's glue that stuff down. Put that down at the bottom over as much as it can go. Stick that kind of trying to angle it so that it stays on so I don't have to worry about it potentially getting damaged. So, that's there. I feel like I want to just bring in my antique linen so those white spots between where his leg and his body is because I am not trying I'm not trying to fussy cut that bit not focusing that little area out. Not gonna do it. Instead, we're gonna do this and add him on kind of like that. So there we go. That guy's done and we've got about a minute. So let's go ahead and uh, glue together another couple pockets while we're waiting for time to run out. So yeah, this, I, I, I know this is, was not a profoundly original video today, but it's one of those things I saw Carrie the Crafter do the single pockets and I was like, Ooh, that's a great idea for using six by six pads. And then I'm pretty sure I saw a double pocket style on a, one of Gala Gastinelli's videos. Like she wasn't making them. She just was putting them into something. And I was like, 
Oh, that's another great way to use six by six paper pads. And since I just bought a whole bunch of six by six paper pads, I was like, you know what? It's part of my goal to use the stuff I have because I keep buying more. Um, which I don't know if you sure saw the sh short that Tiffany Solara put up with a bunch of YouTube crafters talking about I'm a crafter because I have more craft paper, cardstock and craft paper. Oh. Uh, so that's time. Um, let's just go ahead and glue this one together. But one of one of the crafters commented that they, they, they were doing the, I'm a crafter because I've got more, one of them was I've got more craft paper and cardstock than I could ever use in my lifetime and I keep buying more. And I'm like, yes, that is so true. That is so me. All right, so. Let's see, what did we get done today? We got these single pockets folded and I will probably end up saving these guys and decorating them up when I know what journal they're gonna go into. Um, I know I've got at least one more double pocket glued shut. Where is that? We glued that one, so we've got that double stacked pocket. We've got the variation that cut it down so that you've got two stacked pockets. And then we've got the three that we decorated. So we got that guy, this guy, and this one. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please do all the things that lets YouTube know you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.